What's going on guys? Golden State Fishing here. All right, got another great video for you guys today. One I should have done a long time ago again, but uh, here we go, how to jig. All right, so if you guys look back on some of my videos from about two years ago, I did this video, but here's a good update of it. Uh, camera was a lot better than it used to be back then. Uh, the way I did it back then, it was kind of hard to hear and everything. If you guys go back though, it's still a really good video. Go back and watch that one, but here we go, how to jig. All right, so let's start this one off with, uh, well, let's start off with uh, how it all began. I've been uh, jigging now for 30 years. Uh, actually, learned how to bass fish first. Uh, I grew up actually um, up in uh, fishing at my, my grandparents' house up in Lake, uh, Lake Arrowhead. A lot of great bass fishing up there. A lot of smallmouth, a lot of largemouth. I actually grew up like a lot of you guys out there, a lot of you older guys out there, uh, watching Roland Martin, uh, Bill Dance, Jimmy Houston every Saturday morning. Uh, learning everything from that, learning from magazines, everything I could back then. And like the, this is talking, you know, um, late '80s, early '90s, and then uh, I'd go uh, go apply it up there. Uh, actually, got really good at bass fishing when I was young. Caught a lot of fish up there, a lot of crappie also up there, but mainly bass fishing. And then uh, I started fishing at my local lake here in Spear Lake, and uh, actually doing cat fishing in the, the early '90s. And then uh, eventually started to get into trout fishing a little bit, but uh, you know, started like most people do out there. Uh, throwing power bait and uh, throwing throwing metal too, throwing super dupers and uh, uh, all the good metal metal baits that you can get out there, cast masters. And then uh, one day I remember being there though, and I was uh, just like I was ten years old. So this is 1993. Uh, I saw a family down the way just tearing it up. They're just catching trout after trout after trout after trout after trout all day. And then this went on for like the well, next probably four or five trips. I went there. I saw them there. They would be there too, usually on the weekend, doing the same thing. And finally, I got the guts to go up and ask them what they were doing. Uh, one of the guys that was really the best at, out of all of them uh, looked like he was even I mean, kind of showing the other ones even once how to do it. Uh, his name is Mark Kahara. Uh, if you guys uh, uh, been into trout fishing in Southern California, you probably know that name. He is actually one of the first guys to ever... Um, to ever jig, jig for trout. Uh, there's a lot of the guys before him that would do that, but they would throw out, you know, uh, mini jigs with uh, a bobber, but never just doing the way he did. He came out with the way of actually just throwing just the mini jig with the ultralight long rods and uh, jigging for the trout. And wow, has it taken off now? Uh, Southern California, that's where it all started. Uh, just exploded over the last 30 years. <clears throat> it was pretty big back then, but uh, now it's it's huge, really, really huge. It's been huge for the last, last 10, 15 years. Uh, so that's how I got into it. I actually, I, I asked him. I must have bugged him probably for months. And he didn't really want to show me, but then he finally did. And then uh, I was fishing with him and his family a lot and fishing with other guys that he taught to. And uh, I picked it up really quick. And then uh, I got really, really good really, really quick, actually. Uh, after probably a year or two, I was, I was hanging with all those guys like, really well. I'm 10, 11 years old hanging out with you know, 20-year-olds. And just fishing-wise, I could hang with anybody back then. So, you know, after 30 years, I've done a lot more, obviously, and uh, finally perfected it pretty much. Uh, I mean, you never, never stop learning. I still got a lot to learn. Every day I learn something new about fish. Uh, uh, we know basically... Everything about a fish on what what they uh, when they eat all their uh, habits depths temperatures all that stuff I'm still learning, but I've learned a lot over the 30 years as you can imagine um, Yeah, so I just want to pass it on to you guys basically uh, I hope you guys do enjoy all my videos. I put everything I, I can into the videos I know I don't explain as much as I probably should so I'm gonna start doing a lot more of that That's where this video comes in. So uh, first thing we're gonna get into though is um uh, rods. Also, I was gonna say, one more thing about Mark, Mark Ahar, though. I just want to say he is the best trout fisherman I've ever seen in my entire life. I've been doing this for so long. I've been around a lot of elite guys, but no one's ever been anywhere as good as Mark. Uh, I remember being a kid and I thought it was really good, so I'd sit there and like try to challenge him a little bit. And, you know I mean, sometimes I'd get there even like an hour or two before he did because he, he lived down the hill. He'd come up a little bit later and I'd be like, oh, I'm on fish 10. And he'd be like, all right, all right. And you know I mean, I'd Pull a couple more in and like look over at him like, yeah, I'm pretty good. And then he just dropped 20 and 20 casts. I mean, he could literally just will the fish to bite his his jig. He was that good. And that, I mean, all the way up till he passed away about four, four, three, four years ago. And yeah, the trout fishing world up around here uh, lost a really good guy. Uh, really good guy. 
made a lot of good rods too. I'll, obviously, if you guys, anybody in Southern California owns a Markahara rod, I have a few still. Um, yeah, they're, they're like the holy grail of uh, trout jigging rods. If you own one, keep it. On, keep it. If you're going to sell it, please hit me up. I buy as many as I can. I like to get as many Mark's rods as I possibly can. Obviously, I can't get any more. Uh, one of my guys that actually learned uh, before me, he's been doing it for a long time, uh, Armando Acevedo. He's on the team now, too. You guys have seen him in a lot of the videos. Uh, he's been doing it way longer than I have, and he knew Mark really, really well. He owns probably 20 of Mark's rods. So, yeah. So, Mark's rods, definitely awesome stuff. Mark Ahara, you will definitely be missed. Uh, I owe you everything. My life as it is now is built because of what you taught me when I was 10 years old. So pretty good story. Pretty cool story. So now you guys kind of get a little bit of backstory. So now let's get into mini or to jigging. Uh, first thing you want to do when you're jigging is you want to get a good ultralight rod, right? This is one of our katanas. Uh, you guys see me fishing with them all the time. A little hard to come by because they are custom made. High, high quality though. They cost a little bit too. Uh, this is our K4 model. Uh, this is one of my newer ones that I made for myself. Uh, goes for, this one go right here, goes for about $400. Uh, I do do all the, all the, the laser etching in here. This one's my Kobe Bryant rod. I'll show you guys that a little bit later. You get to see all the details on it. Uh, if you guys want to hit me up for one, you can. They are taking a minute. There's a long, long line to get one. A lot of people love them. Uh, Everything that I did about this rod is everything that I've learned from Mark. So definitely, definitely awesome. Like another thing I owe to him. I mean, he came out, he's the one that came out with making these type of rods for jigging, just for jigging. You know what I mean? So we all owe it to him. Anyways, yeah, you want us yourself though, a good ultralight rod. doesn't have to be something that's expensive though. You can go get something that's not nowhere near as expensive as this and it'll work really well. Don't get it just anything, all right? I'm not saying you can go to Walmart and get a $20 rod and you'll be good. You'll be able to do it, but not properly, all right? You want a longer rod, why? A seven, six to eight foot, why? So that you can cast farther. That helps, uh, helps with casting and actually helps with the jigging part too. We'll get to that in a minute though. Um, real? Reel, you definitely want a size 1,000 reel. So something to one size, 1,000 size reel. Why? Because of speed. If you have like a 2,000 or a 3,000, the, the faster you're trying to go slow, and that's going to be pulling in a lot of line uh, really fast. Uh, size 1,000s, usually per turn, you're probably pulling in somewhere between 20 and 30 inches of line per turn, per all the way, all the way around. That's 20 to 30. Um, anything anything in the lower section right there is really good. Why do you not want a 500 then? Because a 500 would be a little too slow, and it lacks the power you would need to pull in like a, a big fish. You can still pull in big fish. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't, but it will be a lot more difficult. You're better off going with the 1,000. It's perfect. It's, everything about it is perfect for what we're doing here. Um, the speed, everything about it. So get yourself a good 1,000. I'm going to give out uh, one of each... Uh, things that I think are pretty good rods. If you get a Daiwa Presso, that's a really uh, inexpensive rod. I think they range anywhere from sixty to eighty dollars, somewhere in there. Um, you get a seven six, or I think they have eight foot. Also, either one of those are really really good. Also, you can pair that with a, a Shimano uh, Sahara. That's a good one thousand reel, smooth too. Not crazy expensive. I think they're like um, I want to say seventy to eighty dollars. Uh, that's the smoothest thing you do want. This is a Vanquish, uh, a Shimano Vanquish from Japan. Extremely, extremely nice. I tell people all the time, you don't need something this nice, but you can get to Vegas in a Honda. You can also get there in a Ferrari. I'd rather get there in a Ferrari. If you're driving back and forth to, to Vegas as much as like, you know, I would basically in the fishing world, I fish on the daily. So it's a tool to me. It's, this is my job, not just for fun. You know what I mean? So I, you want something really nice. Um, but yeah, you want the, like I said, seven, six to eight foot. Reason why is mainly casting, but uh, a good jigging. Uh, you want something ultra light though too. If you're looking for other uh, rods out there, there's other ones good too, like Fenwick makes some couple. Uh, there's some good ultra light. Just make sure it says ultra light rod. Usually you'll know by the two to six pound or um, one to four or one to six or whatever it is like that, but usually around in that area. And it should say ultra light fishing on it. So when you're jigging, though, the reason why you want such good, uh, I mean, some decent equipment, when you're jigging, it's about that constant rhythm. Hopefully you guys can see all that right there. Uh, you just want to get a nice bounce. That's what it is. 
after uh, the next video I'll show you guys, it's gonna, I'm going to go over the table over here. And I'm going to show you guys some more stuff. We're going to go into a little bit more depth on bass and stuff like that too. But uh, And then after that, I will actually, you guys can see um, on some of the fish I've hooked, uh, you can actually see my rhythm and all that stuff too. So basically, this is parallel though right here. That will be parallel. I usually hold my rod tip a little bit above parallel. And you just want to get a constant, nice little constant bounce. Just like that. And then with a nice smooth reeling. It's going to take you a little bit of time to get that down at the same time. You're going to be probably all over the place a little bit. Don't worry. That's, that's just normal. It's kind of like patting the top of your head and rubbing your stomach. Uh, same sort of thing. It's going to take a minute. If you've been fishing for a really long time and now you're going to get into jigging, it won't be probably as hard as somebody that's learning how to fish and learning how to jig all at the same time. So just practice makes perfect like anything else in life. And just give it your all. And uh, after a while, it'll, it'll come around. And once you start hooking those fish, though, I promise you, you're going to really, really love it. The reason why jigging is so much better, I think, than throwing bait. When you're throwing out bait, what you're doing is you're chucking out the bait, like a power bait or something like that. And you're waiting for a fish to come find it. And hopefully, you threw it in the right spot. Like uh, fish like a lot of drop-offs. They like uh, certain depths, certain things like that. If you threw it in the wrong spot, there's probably not going to be a fish that's going to go by there. And you're not going to get a bite. Sure, you're going to change your bait and you're going to cast it up maybe in a different spot and you might get one there. But with jigging, you're, you're moving fast. All right, so um, you're, you're literally combing a nice area of water. Like when I'm out fishing, I'm casting out, I'm combing that area for about 15, 20 minutes. If I don't get a bite, I move on to the next spot. Because I know, like, with the, especially in my experience and everything, but if you're jigging properly... And you're you're going by that fish, and he it's looking for food. It's gonna go after it once or I mean after you go by the first time, or if not the second time, no matter what, it's gonna probably go after it, and you're gonna at least get a bite. You know what I mean? So after if I don't get a bite within 15 or 20 minutes, I move on to the next spot, and the next spot, and the next spot. Um, if you're fishing like at a crowded lake, I understand you know what I mean, and you can't be moving around a lot because it's the lake's full of people. If you stay in that spot sooner or later, usually the fish will come by there. Um, if you're in a good spot, if you know the lake, you know what I mean. Say if it's like a local SoCal lake, if you know the lake. They will come by, but uh, yeah. So uh, we'll go into more depth though about the reels and the and, and the rod. Like I said, I give you guys a little bit of a thing. Um, I'm gonna show you guys in a minute here. Like I said, we're gonna go over the table. I'm gonna go over some stuff. I'm actually, gonna show you guys how to hook up some of the baits for jigging, and then um, and then after that, right after that, I'm gonna show you guys a couple videos of me hooking up on fish show, just so you can guys can kind of see the, my rhythm and um, and my reeling. You know, like I said, it's gonna take some time, but you. I tell people all the time, you can go too fast. You can definitely go too fast. You really can't go too slow, all right? Because if you're going real slow, even like this, you have a chance. If you're going like this, no chance. So just slow things down, especially if you've been fishing and you see everybody around you nailing fish and you're not. The best thing you could do is just slow it down. Stop what you're doing, take a breath, and slow everything down more. You know what I mean? Just a nice bounce and go nice and slow. And sooner or later, it's going to happen. Once you figure out that speed that they want, it's it's on. It's on after that. You know what I mean? Once I, that's what happens with me. I get in the zone once I figure out exactly what they want. You know what I mean? You can just you can just hammer them fish after fish. So like I said, get yourself a good ultralight jigging rod. Doesn't have to be break the bank stuff. Uh, just something decent. Uh, I like I, re I recommend something if you can afford if you can afford a combo that's around two hundred dollars that's your best bet if you really can't like I said you will be okay it, it's not the end of the world I'm not saying you can't jig fish but uh, you know what I mean if you spend like about a hundred dollars on the rod and a hundred dollars on the reel it's going to be something quality enough the reel especially you want something smooth you don't want it to be all jerky and rough you know what I mean you're not going to get that smooth nice constant retrieve. So uh, just uh, apply a little bit of that, you guys, if you can. Well, uh, like I said, we're going to go over there in a minute right now, and I'm going to show you guys some other stuff. And then right after that, we're going to show that vid that, the other videos of me catching some fish. You guys can see my rhythms. And then um, and we'll come right back here. All right, guys. So what I wanted to show you now is a few different things. What I'm going to show you is uh, some of the reels and uh, show you how to hook up some of these baits. And also we're gonna talk about um, using different lines, what kind of lines to use, okay? Uh, first off, I'm gonna show you guys a line that you would wanna use for jigging. All right, for 20 years or 25 years, I was using monofilament, a bunch of different kinds, but the number one I always used, I always liked, was uh, Maxima. That's Maxima right there, great line. This is a three pound 
I never really use three pound. I just had this one on hand to show you guys. Uh, man, this is Maxima. You can get it just about anywhere. Um, you can get it on Amazon. I think even Walmart carries it. But uh, definitely go two pound. Two pound is what you want. Uh, the reason why is uh, size wise. The smaller the, the diameter is, the farther you're going to be able to cast. I know there's a lot of guys out there have been trying to jig and they've had problems, but cause usually because they're using like four pound. Two pound works really, really well. It's, it's all you need. I use two pound for decades. You can bring in giant fish, 10 pound fish easily on two pound test with uh, just a little bit of skill behind that too. So uh, I always recommend, like I said, everybody, I told you guys earlier, I recommend using monofilament or, I mean, you could use fluorocarbon if you want, but I recommend using, um, uh, using uh, this, monofilament. Maxima is monofilament. I think they make a fluorocarbon also, but uh, right there, as you see, premium monofilament. Use this until you learn how to jig really well. Once you know how to jig really well, then you can make the switch if you'd like to braid. But braid is just so difficult to use. Trying to figure out the braid on top of trying to learn how to jig, I think it's just too much. Uh, I don't recommend it at all. You're, you're never going to get good at jigging that way. You know what I mean? Because you're going to be concentrating so much on the braid, and it's going to be such a hassle to you, especially of the knots and all the stuff you got to do with it. I'll show you that right now. Uh, though the kind of braid I do use is... Uh, Phoenix Iron Feather. This is their five pound right here. I like using the four pound, but lately uh, it's been out of stock a lot. So I'll use the five too. I really don't see too much difference at all in it. Uh, just a tiny bit difference in uh, diameter, but it, it's really nice, uh, really nice uh, line. Really nice and smooth. Uh, you guys can see right there. It's actually on the box right there. Uh, probably hard to even see right there. It's so thin, but that's why you can cast really well. It's got really good sensitivity. That's the main thing I like about it is the sensitivity with braid. But like I said, you can you can uh, use uh, the monofilament and do really well for a long time. There's also other monofilaments, monofilaments you can use. I just prefer Maxima because it's really soft and uh, really easy to use. Uh, there's a lot of other brands that a lot of people like to use out there, and I've tried them all, and I, I think Maxima is the best. I would personally go with that. But All right, so here's the Iron Feather. The problem with using braid, though, is you can't use braid straight up. You have to use... Uh, leader if you use this straight up and tie this straight to uh, Your bait the fish will see this you're not gonna catch anything not only that you're not gonna have no stretch at all Which could be a problem um, You're gonna put a lot of stress on that fish on the mouth on the mouth of the fish basically um, and you're probably gonna pull the hook basically or or uh, All kinds of problems could occur basically uh, so you got to use uh, you got to use uh, a good uh, Some kind of good leader uh, I use, you got to use fluorocarbon like fluorocarbon because it has a uh, low stretch too in it. That way when you put back on those fish, you, you hook them really fast. You don't want to use uh, monofilament because actually monofilament has a stretch in it. And if you're using it for your entire line, it's your whole spool is full of this. It works really well because it does the whole thing stretches and that's, that's okay. That's good. That gives us, uh, so when the fish is pulling really hard, it gives you a little bit of leeway. It doesn't snap. It just stretches a little bit. So that's good. But if you use monofilament with the braid all the stress is going to be in the monofilament and you're probably going to snap off so you don't want to do that i recommend fluorocarbon i like cigar they make a couple good ones i like to use i forget the, what the yellow box is uh, i think it's the invis one or something like that that one's really well really good and then uh, the brazex that's like the maroon looking box but their number one one it's it is the most expensive one i think this box is uh i think i paid 35 dollars for this on amazon is the 100% fluorocarbon, they're Tatsu, it's a black box. Uh, this will last you a long time though. You're just using it for leaders. I said with leaders, I use a, a seven to eight foot leader. So what I do is usually just measure it to my rod after I make the knot and uh, I do a seven, like I said, seven to eight foot leader. Uh, why? Because it, uh, it gives a uh, bad thing about braid is it doesn't shrink, I mean, it doesn't sink that fast. This does. So if you use a really long leader, it, it kind of, I think it, it helps out and sinks a lot, a lot better. Um, I don't know. It just works out really well with me. I've always done seven to eight feet. That way too, if you snap off or something like that, you might have at least five or six left, maybe on that one. You could probably use that too, uh, reuse that, that leader that's on there. Like I said, Seaguar, definitely a great leader line. It'll last you a long time because you're only using it for leaders. Comes with 200 yards, which is plenty. Plenty to get everything you need to get done. Like I said, I think I go through I don't know, uh, maybe two boxes of this a year, maybe. Usually like in one, if I'm just doing everything by myself, if I'm the only one using it, about one year. So definitely goes a long way. 
So we went through line. The reason I'm, or I'll show you guys actually, you know what? I'll show you guys why i telling you you should use braid first because of this. <laughs> if you guys can see that right there, all right, that knot that I use for my braid, it's called an Albright knot. Here's in my left hand right here. That is the fluorocarbon. That's the cigar. Right hand, this is green. Actually, it's a green color. It's a, their four-pound uh, four braid, the Phoenix braid. Uh, yeah, that knot is right there. I'm sure you guys can barely see that even on my hand. On my finger right there, that's the knot. I'm going to try to get a little closer. That is a knot right there. That's how small it is. It's an Albright knot. I'm not going to show you guys how to do that. There's plenty of videos out there for that. If you guys want to see, uh, look up Albright knots on YouTube, and they'll show you how to how to tie that. It's really hard to do, though, with this line. Well, I'm sure with, you know I mean, some really thick lines like, uh, you know I mean, 10 pound or something like that. I know it's a lot easier. I used for a pyramid, I used a 10 pound. And it's a lot easier to do. But with this line, it's so difficult. If you're learning how to jig and you're having to do this too on top of it, you're never going to really learn properly. And uh, the main thing is, is learning how to jig. Now, this is just something you, uh, after you're, you know, pretty novice, been doing it a while, you can switch to the braid and probably have no problem at first even i did though like i said i used for 25 years i was using uh, monofilament so when i switched to this i almost gave up on it a couple times because it was so difficult to do that's after 25 years of fishing so you can imagine if you try to do it right now you're just it's gonna just make you so angry you're not gonna even want to fish anymore <laughs> literally it will do that to you so don't do that because that's what i said after you do the albright knot you have to cut it flush the reason why we had to do it flush is because we're doing seven to eight feet, foot liters which means this little knot has to go through the guides and your rod and if it if it, you have too many big of uh, big tag ends on there it's just going to catch up on every guide and slow it down and it's just going to make a mess <laughs> so you have to cut it really really low like that and if you guys can see right here i'm gonna give it a good pull that is as strong as the braid by itself my knots you know me i've got my knots down really really well it's taken me a long time though to get it down i think i've been using braid now for almost four years and i'm Probably in the last year or two, I've gotten to be an expert at it now. But, yeah, you're going to have, when you first start, you're going to lose a lot of fish. Trust me, it'll happen. No matter how good you think you are, it's going to happen. It's going to slip out. You're going to lose a lot of fish because fish is going to pull really hard and that knot's going to just slip right through. you got to make sure you crank it down pretty good without, you know what I mean, without breaking it. But, yeah, you, you guys will see the problem. But uh, So that's from so much for braid. Uh, like I said, it's great. Best thing about braid is sensitivity and strength uh, negatives uh, definitely the knots and uh, in the wind if, if you ever use braid you'll know you'll get these things called wind knots it's just like a magical knot that just happens out of nowhere and you're going to be in hell you're going to hate life it's going to take you i mean you're going to just step away from fishing for 20 30 minutes and try to fix it all but uh okay so that's enough for braid all right i'm going to show you guys too also um let's see well you know what? we'll go over reels like i said with reels you don't need something really, really great with the reel. Um, I don't have any any more like cheaper reels anymore. But uh, you mean go with with something that's you know what I mean not not too crazy in price. Uh, a good a good reel would be a Sahara uh, Shimano Sahara. That's a good that's a good reel. That's about I think they were about ninety nine ninety bucks or so like that. That's a really good reel. Um, yeah, uh, that's a really good reel to start with. Also, uh, the rod I would start with. Uh, I like uh, the Presso Daiwa Presso Seven Six. Great rod. Look that up. Daiwa Presso 7.6. Great rod. If that combination right there will cost you about 200 bucks to start off with jigging. You don't need great stuff for jigging, but you want something smooth. Because the whole point about jigging is getting into a good rhythm. And if you have smooth stuff, it's just it's just a lot easier that way. You don't want something that's all crunchy and just, it's not smooth as you're jigging. Because you want a nice constant roll when you're jigging. Uh, if you want to get up into higher price stuff... These, you guys have all seen my reels and rods and all that stuff. Um, reels, I like Shimano. I go with Shimano most of the time. I do do some uh, Daiwa. Those are the, you I mean, those are, the, those are the Ford and Chevy of fishing to me. Uh, both great. I like Shimano's especially, though. Uh, anything, from, actually, either one. I like JDM, though. Uh, I feel Japan makes, so if you see right there, it says Japan on there. This is the Vanquish uh, 1000 uh, 2017. This reel right here is really made for trout fishing. 
this this in particular model, the 2017. It's one of the most rarest ones too, and, and price wise, you're around six hundred dollars still. And this is like I said, it's six year old model. Uh, really great reel though. I love this reel. I got a lot of my guys and a lot of people try to buy it off me. Not gonna happen. I love her. Look at that. I mean, super smooth, super nice. Does it on its own. So definitely a right, nice reel. The also I have the new. Let's see. The new Vanquish. You guys can see that. That is the new Vanquish right there. I have two of these. I have one on my uh, drop shot rod also. This one's purple. The other one's red. I had I did all these upgrades on it. You don't need to do all these upgrades. These things come out of the box really badass. But I I like to accessorize. I did uh, some uh, bearing package upgrades on this. It's got a carbon fiber uh, drag in it too. So a lot of upgrades. Uh, out of the box, I think from Japan, delivered to you. You can find these on eBay for, I'd say, um, I think they run around $500 out the door. That's that's maybe a little less, like 475 Great reel. You don't need to do anything to it. This is the box right here that came in. That's one of the boxes for one of mine. Uh, great reel. Top notch. The greatest thing about it is they are so light. Uh, I think the reel only weighs uh, under 5 ounces. So incredibly light. You, you put that with one of our katanas I was showing you guys earlier. This is one of my katanas right here. This is my split grip, one of my newest ones, my K4. Uh, I do all the etching, as you guys can see. This is like my Kobe Bryant rod. You guys can see a lot of this one uh, and a lot of the new videos coming up because I love this rod and this real combination. It's really great. Uh, you guys can see done up with Kobe. I love Kobe. I love everything Kobe was about. Mamba mentality all the way, every day. Got a Laker purple. Um, yeah, let's see one of our katanas. If you want to hit me up about the katana, you can. Problem is, uh, we can only get so many made. They're, they're really high quality, and as fast as we make them, they're gone, as you can imagine. So we'll try to get to everybody. Um, in the future here, we might be getting be able to get a lot more made quickly. So if that happens, uh, we'll we'll definitely get them out to you guys. As you can see, so this one's a split grip. We like. Uh, I never really like split grips, but I love this one. Came out really nice. Great reel. Then also we got, this is a Tennessee handle, full Tennessee. You can see I did all that one etching too. This is like one of our K1s. And this is the Stella. Stella is uh, the highest uh, quality uh, reel that uh, Shimano makes. Uh, really, really nice reel. Expensive. Um, some of the other, this is a 2023 model. I'm sorry, 2022 model. This one runs about 600 bucks. Don't need all that. It's just, I like them. They're nice. They're not as light, though, as um, the Vanquishes. I would say that this, this is like a Colt 45. You guys know guns at all? This is a Colt 45. Best quality gun you can make. Colt knew what they were doing. A lot of metal parts, though. So it's definitely a little heavier. But quality is there. It ain't going to get any better than that. This, a Vanquish like this one or the newer one or any of the, any of the vanquishes um more like cold polymer uh, uh i mean polymer parts in there uh so lighter it's just a lot lighter but still high quality this is like a glock this is what it would, a glock would be like actually basically right here so definitely great reels uh, if you guys want high quality reels i recommend going with japanese uh shimano or daiwa daiwa may make some really good ones too their best reels exist uh, that costs, that's about $900 for the new one right now. And it's, it's about as good as it gets. Let me trust me on that. Like I said, I just, I'm a Shimano guy most of the time. I do have a few, uh, Daiwas, but, uh, yeah, I just, I love my Shimano. All right. So I showed you guys all that. I showed you reels, showed you line. Now let's get into the baits. Okay. I'm going to show you guys how to rig up a couple baits. Like I said, remember earlier, um, everyone thinks the jigging is jigs. These are mini jigs. These are mini jigs. But that's not just the, what you do for jigging. Jigging is the the movement, uh, um, the type of the type of uh, fishing, basically. So you can jig with a, with one of our minnows. This is one of our Spartan minnows, our new Spartan minnows, uh, or you know, I mean any of our stuff. Uh, our inchworms, our inchworms are really awesome too to jig with. Any of our stuff you can jig with. Um, doesn't have to be a mini jig. But I'm going to show you how to hook up uh the minnow real fast, and then I'll show you how to hook up the the mini jig just so you guys understand that. All right, so. So here's one of our Spartan minnows. Gonna take it with the two fingers, just like that. 
take one of our ball head hooks. Ball head hooks are for that stuff and for these, and the jig hooks are for mini jigs. So take a ball head, go right into the nose. Uh, good thing about, like I said, if you saw my last video, you can count down. So it's a one, two, three, four, four down. If you're ever sure, I mean, you know, on any, any bait, uh, how far you should go, you can always measure it. Just stick it to the side of it like that, and you can see where it needs to come out. So on our bait, so you can see on the, on this uh, Spartan Minnow, you can see it needs to come out on the number four little bump right there. So yeah, stick it in like that right into the middle. Work it down nicely and try to get it to come out where you want on the four. And there you go. I did it. I'm pretty close right there to the four. So it's good to go. Try to center it as much as possible. I'm not that centered really. I'm off to the left a little bit. But uh, if you had to pull it back out and redo it again. But, I mean, that's what it should look like when you're all said and done. So that's how you do that. Uh, same thing with these. Same thing with any other bait or worms or anything else that we carry or anything like that. Uh, same thing you're just gonna do it the same way uh, on our like our inchworm uh, mini jigs mini jigs these are the main ones the reason why all of our if you ever notice on our jig heads uh, they have a little tapering in the back right here it's called for speed loading now you could either load or put your jig together beforehand and you can stick it in through the bottom we all know that and you work it all the way down and then you pop it pop the, the eye through like right there or you can do it the way I do it's called speed loading so that way you can change out colors really fast when you're out there on the water. Don't have to sit there and, uh, I mean, just try to <laughs> try to retie every single time. That's a pain in the butt. So the way I do it on, on a mini jig is I try to find a good slit that I want on either side. You can put on either color that you want on the top or the bottom. Uh, whichever one you go into is going to be the top color. So we're going to do the blue. That looks like a good slit right there. I'm going to aim for that. So instead of going to all the way to the very top, you want to go a little bit lower than the top. Somewhere right about there just like that so it's gonna be stuck into the side because you guys can see a little bit right there now you're gonna get the hook and work it all the way out and try to get it into oh i'm laying the one over see sometimes you gotta mess with it a little bit I'm trying to show you guys at the same time okay there we are now i'm in i'm in this the the, the spot i wanted the little slit right there and see the jigs right there up against now you're just gonna push it down like that. Use your thumb and shove it down. Grab the back of the hook, pull it down the rest of the way and pop that over. And there you go. Clean, everything's ready to go. Uh, after you're done using this color, you wanna move on to another one. You simply be gentle though. You don't wanna tear the jigs up. You want them to last a while. Uh, just pull down a little bit. Try to get it right back out the same hole just like that. Work it all the way out just like that and no harm done put that back in your tackle box use it again this one already had a hole in it as you can see there's a little there's a hole right there use the same hole every time oh just use the same hole though work it down oh, all right this one's being a little stubborn there you go use the same hole pop it down same thing as earlier, pop it over, good to go, and there you go. That works the same with the 1 16th or the 1 32nd. We also have 1 48th. Uh, difference between a 1 48th is going to be um, a little bit smaller than the 1 32nd, and then a 1 64th is the smallest. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys learned a lot right here. Uh, like I said, you're going to have to practice all this stuff. Like I said, again, when you're first learning how to jig, I definitely recommend going with the Maxima or any kind of monofilament and uh, work your way into braid. Once you're an expert at jigging, you've caught lots of fish, you're like, okay, now I want to hit the next step. Then you go to the braid. Otherwise, you will hate life. You're probably going to quit. Call me or uh, email me. So, all right, hope you guys all help that out. Uh, so hopefully this all works out for you. Like I said, just uh, practice makes perfect. And soon you guys will be the top uh, fisherman.
hope you guys enjoyed that video. Hope you guys learned a lot. Try to put out as much as I can. Believe me, my brain was just going nuts with uh, stuff to teach you guys, but don't want to overwhelm you. Just the bases are good. Remember everything I told you about the line and all that? I know there's a lot of you are going to try to go out there and just going to be like, I'm going to use the braid. Like I said, I recommend don't use the braid. Wait on the braid. Learn to use uh, monofilament. Like I said, you can use, uh, there's different brands you can use if you don't want to use uh, Maxima. Maxima is a great one, I'm telling you right now. It's very limp, very easy to tie. Everything about it is just good. It's good quality line. I would learn with that once you are, you mean, give it at least a year, I'd say. Give it a little year, a solid year of you fishing almost every week at least, trying to jig every week using the Maxima. Then, if you want, you can try to go to the braid. Believe me, okay? You'll get better at jigging a lot faster if you do it that way. Just want to tell you guys that now. So, like I said, just go out there and use the Maxima. Use the two-pound. Uh, go out and get yourself a good rod, a decent rod. And uh, just start learning. you got to go out there and start fishing. I used to fish a lot when I was young. Um, there was a little bit of pyramid by that time in my life where I obviously... You mean when I was in my 20s where I didn't fish as much, but I still did. I still went on jig, still went to, to the Sierras, still did all that, but just not as much, obviously. Now in the last, like, uh, six, seven years here now, I've been just, I've been fishing, obviously, three to four times a week. You know what I mean? Do going everywhere again, and, uh, yeah, here we are. So 30 years, though, 30 years of doing this, and, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it takes a while. But, like I said, if you guys do it enough, you will, you'll get better and better at it. And, uh... I know there's a lot of people out there that still use bait and stuff. It's okay to throw out like a bait rod and then try to jig next to it and do all that. But once you start catching on jigs, I'm promising you right now, if you give it everything and forget about the bait and forget about everything else, you'll get a lot better, a lot faster. If that's what you're giving your time to is the jigging, it'll come around a lot faster and uh, you'll just start catching fish a lot. It's going to get really, really cool. You're going to enjoy it and it's going to make just fishing that much more enjoyable. Uh, a lot more better than I know just, I mean, some people like to sit in the chair and I guess relax and and watch the rod <coughs> with bait. Not my thing. I like to be doing something. I mean, I like to feel that hit in my hand. There's nothing better than jigging and getting a hit in your hand. You know I mean, I guess that's the best way to get a trout to be able to feel that. You know I mean, bang. Another thing too, when you guys are fishing, like I tell everybody, you no, know, if you feel anything at all when you're jigging, pull back, pull back. It doesn't matter what what you think it could be or whatever. If something is different at all, or you feel a hit, or, or I mean, a, I mean anything, just pull back. If there's nothing there, there's nothing there. That's fine. But if you're like, oh, I think I just got a hit, and you're just really, I think I just got a hit. You're never gonna catch anything. If you feel anything at all, just pull back on it. Nothing crazy. Just a nice, you know, nice little hook. You mean a little hook set? You're not bass fishing here. You're not using 20 pound test. You don't want to just rip it all the way back. You're probably gonna snap a couple fish off. So, just uh, yeah. Just, just use a good judgment there on that. Um, but I hope you guys did enjoy that video. Uh, I'm going to be out fishing a lot. Southern California. Trout season about to start here. I got a couple more trips to go up to the Sierras. And uh, one more to Utah also. And then also it's pyramid time. You guys are going to catch me out at Pyramid Lake in Nevada. Catching those big old cutties a lot this year. Look forward to those, those videos coming here soon. I'm going to give that place a really good hardcore uh, beating this year. I want a 20 to 25 pounder this year for sure. So I'm going to give it everything I got. Me and the boys are going to go out there and just give everything we got. My girl's going to be out there too. We're actually going to be getting a, um, getting a trailer here soon. So I'm going to put that, leave that out there all year. I mean all winter. And then I'm going to take it from there to the Sierra. So you're going to be seeing a lot of good videos in uh, Pyramid Lake in the Sierra. is coming up very, very quickly here. So uh, yeah, next year is going to be, be awesome. Just awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you guys learned a lot from this video, though. Make sure you guys check out our website at www.goldenstatefishing.shop. Get yourself some of those baits. Go out there and learn how to jig with them. They'll change your life. It's going to change your jig, your fishing life, that's for sure. Uh, I know you guys will enjoy them. I'm going to put up the QR code right here. So if you click on the QR code, they'll take you right to our website. Or you can go to also uh, make sure you add us on Instagram. Um, I do a lot of stuff on Instagram, a lot of, a lot of stuff I can tell you guys. If you don't have an Instagram, you don't want one, but I would just make one just so you can add us on there and watch a lot of the stuff I do on there. I do a lot of raffles, a lot of cool stuff. I'm raffling, uh, I even raffle uh, katanas on there all the time. A lot of happy winners out there that, you know what I mean? It's pretty cool. You can't afford a $400 rod, but you buy yourself a raffle spot and, uh, you know what I mean, for $20, $23, you win a $400 rod. Can't go wrong with that. So uh, definitely add us on Instagram. Um, you, the link is on there also. And then uh, also waterland sunglasses. Also a good part of jigging too is uh, visual. 
You got to have a good visual, so get yourself a good pair of uh, polarized sunglasses. Waterland makes a great pair of sunglasses. Um, you guys see me wearing them all the time. Uh, once you go to checkout, though, uh, you use code GSF. If you use code GSF at checkout, you will save 15% on your purchase. That goes a long way. They're, uh, they're some good, they're good, high quality, high, high quality uh, sunglasses. You know what I mean? I think they, they go for around about 100 bucks. so 15% off of that goes a long way. So make sure you guys use our code GSF and save that money. But uh, I guess that's it for now. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. I'm hoping you guys learned a lot, a lot on this video. If you guys have any questions, just go ahead and at, uh, go to the comment section. Ask me anything you guys want to shoot. I I love talking with you guys and uh, just trying to you know mean figure out whatever problems you guys are having. See if I can uh, if I can if I have the answer for them. Uh, also, you can hit me up on Instagram too and message me on there anytime you like, and I will definitely get back to you. If everybody knows that I try to get back as soon as possible uh, to everybody. I know, uh, you know, I mean, if you have a fishing uh, trip coming up, you have a couple uh, questions. I want to get those uh, get those answers to you as fast as possible, as fast as I possibly can. But I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming up. Like I said, SoCal coming up, a couple more Eastern Sierra videos, Utah. So uh, stay tuned for it all. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, though. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. I'm going to do a lot more how-to videos. I'm also going to teach you guys how to drop shot next. So uh, until next time, Golden State Fishing. Fish on.